Hi, in previous videos you've seen me use this puppy quite a few times, it's the Mantis Elite Stereoscopic Inspection Microscope. You've seen me use it for uh, soldering, for inspection of you know bad solder joints or you know anything that requires a reasonably low magnification like anything under times 10 and this is the duck's guts, the bee's knees of stereoscopic vision inspection microscopes for PCB work and stuff like that actually doing surface mount soldering and other forms of inspection and I've done a review of this so I won't go over how fantastic it is which I can't actually show you on camera unfortunately because it is actually stereoscopic if I sit in front of it and I move my head like this just around a little bit I can actually see the image moving and it is stereoscopic just like uh, your traditional stereoscopic microscope like this but instead of having to peer into the eyepieces like this and you know, try and do that soldering for 10 hours on a huge board all day you just get so fatigued it's incredible but this thing much more ergonomic it's usually got a larger working distance and anyway it's fantastic but the problem with this puppy is that it's hopeless for getting uh, any sort of images out of it digital images either um, still uh, photography or video and you've seen me try and use it a few times in my videos where I've actually held that like put the uh, camcorder on a tripod and I've just gotten it right in line perfectly with one of the vision paths in there and if I get the zoom just right and the focus and the distance and the angle and I you know have my tongue at the right angle I can just maybe get an image out of this thing <laughs> but it's designed for purely optical work just looking through it like this but thankfully uh, the guys at Vision Engineering and their local uh, reps Hawker Richardson here in Australia have sent me the new Mantis Elite it's exactly the same model it's the Mantis Elite but it's got the cam it's a Mantis Elite cam with the built-in camera awesome so let's check it out now it's actually quite a horde they sent through here but uh, we've got the main uh, head itself we've got this is uh, rather exciting. We've got uh, one of these um, uh, embedded uh, PCs which go on the back so presumably that's got all the uh, vision inspection software and everything uh, pre-installed. We've got exactly the same universal arm. I was um, hoping that they'd uh, send me the one uh, a different arm but identical. I've got a um, Dell Ultra Sharp 25 inch monitor. I've got another uh, 22 inch monitor back there, keyboard and the head itself as well as and once again you get different uh, heads for these, you can order exact, like the exact magnification you want this is the uh, times 4 uh, lens for example that uh, just screws into the bottom you can put up to, um, thanks Jim from uh, Hawk at Richardson uh, you can put up to two of these lenses on the bottom of the unit at any one time and then swivel them in and out and you can see that under here, you can see that uh, this one has a times 4 lens on the front and times 8 lens on the back and you can just swivel it around like that to get the magnif magnification that you need. Now you can get uh, times uh, 10 lenses for this and I think even up to times 15 but on this uh, universal stand that they got here like this I would, I, I really have found that anything over times 8 gets a little bit fiddly so I've tried to use a times 10 on this and it's okay but because you have to move it up and down to adjust the focus and if you wobble the bench at all you know you get a little bit of wobble you can sort of lock it in place and stuff like that but you know yeah I wouldn't with the universal arm like this I wouldn't be using anything over a times 8 but they do have like a desktop stand uh, which is less flexible than this because this is really nice you can just you know uh, move this all around your bench, swing it out when you don't need it, swing it in but the trade-off of course is the stability of the uh, image and that's what I got in the packet, I've got the uh, UI software which uh, it uses to do the uh, uh, you know image inspection on the uh, PC and stuff like that, measurement and uh, all that sort of stuff so Mantis didn't uh, write that, somebody else wrote that but that's uh, quite common and here's 
Inspection head nicely vacuum formed and suspended inside this box. They really know how to do packaging because this thing has really precision optics. Just a tip, if you're buying one of these on eBay uh, and you're getting it shipped, uh, make sure that the person shipping it really knows what they're doing because you don't want this puppy to be uh, damaged in uh, transit. And that's really nice packaging. They've got these uh, straps on the uh, side which like just hold it sort of suspended right in the middle like that. Brilliant. And here's the new head. Here's the old one. Absolutely identical except this one has the uh, lenses attached. There's the uh, rotating mechanism for the lenses. Oh, it's very springy, very nice, very professional. And um, it's got the same version 2 um, LED lights on it and they work really well. I've actually done a video doing an inline uh, dimmer attachment for this thing. It's a shame that they haven't upgraded with a dimmer. Like, how hard would it be or maybe um you know dim separate sides of the light uh, for example because that's useful for getting uh, ser for viewing serial numbers and stuff like that if you have the light coming from only one side and you know less or none from the other you can actually light up the um uh, the part numbers on chips in uh, different ways anyway that's you know i really would have liked it for the money um, you invest in one of these. I would like to have seen uh, a dimmer, separate dimmer control for e each LED. Anyway, absolutely um, identical. And there's the um, there's the input for the uh, LED light. But the only difference you can see is this tiny little four pin connector down there. That must be for the internal camera. So that'd be uh, some form of uh, power and uh, serial bus. And if you haven't seen how this uh, universal stand works, it doesn't even screw in. It just pops on top like that and the sheer weight of the thing just holds it down. And this one actually has just a uh, clamp on it. You can mount it on the uh, side of the bench. You can actually uh, screw this down into the bench as well. You don't necessarily have to clamp it on the side, but it's more versatile that way for me. And it really is very easy to assemble. There's just two big ass screws which uh, go through the head here onto the universal stand and Bob's your uncle. All right, I know you glass aficionados want to see the glass where it's all at. This is the uh, Times 8 lens. These are very, very expensive uh, lenses. There is a hell of a lot of glass and uh, precision glass in these things. Very heavy, weighs a ton. And trap for young players, don't use just the bare lens under there when you're soldering and doing other stuff. Get the protective caps. They're super cheap and they just clip on there and they protect your expensive optics. You're a fool if you don't use them. <gasps> Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Yes, that connector on the back is just a standard, uh, well, <laughs> this weird ass four pin one to a standard uh, USB. So why they didn't just whack the USB on the back of it? They could have engineered that in. I don't know. Maybe they didn't want to change their moldings or something. I, yeah, I don't know. I would have preferred straight USB. Trying to get a replacement for this thing. Oh. And if you're wondering what this knob on the side is, well, it's a bit of a dead giveaway. It's the distance between your pupils. So, you know, everyone's got different uh, width um, pupil distance and things like that. So, yeah, adjust that until it's right for you. Now, presumably you don't have to buy this. It's probably an optional extra. I should check on that. But, uh, yeah, we've got one of these um, uh, small form factor PCs that fits on the uh, visa mount on the back of the monitor. And uh, so I've got a 24-inch uh, monitor they supplied this is probably their standard one, and there we go, there's the mounting holes. And let's have a look at the PC we got. It's just going to be an off-the-shelf one. Like, you can use anything, but it's probably got the software OS and software and everything pre-installed. So if you're, you know, if you're spending someone else's money, you uh, want to get one of these puppies that's MSI. Nice. So uh, they've branded that Vision Engineering, but it's one of these uh, small form factor PCs. SATA, HDMI, you know, fairly basic. Don't know what the specs are yet have to power it up. And the PC is going on the back of there nicely, but I found one thing, and I know this is really nitpicky, but when you, you know, when you're selling a professional system like this, I think it's important. I mean, here's the HDMI output here, here's the HDMI input. I mean, you know, it's just like, like, six inches, that's all you need, a six inch HDMI cable. They give you a two meter cable. Like, why? That's just, it's just dumb, you just gotta tie it up in place. So, yeah, how hard is it to, you know, if you get a custom lead like this made for your USB, why can't you just, surely you can buy short uh, HDMI cables like that. Just small touches like that. 
just, you know, it's important. And look, now it just gets in the way of all my other cables. And you can see it from the front. And somehow I don't think that cable's gonna work in Australia. I I think I might have one though, so yeah, that's a fail. And the one annoying thing is that uh, they've got the light cable integrated into the stand, which is all very nice, but the USB cable just like comes off at an angle like this and where I'm supposed to tie it up here myself, like, what? No, it's just sort of hacked on, I don't like it. All right, let's power this thing on. Um, I didn't get a mouse, although I couldn't find one in the box, maybe I've lost it. Il Iyam Yama. I've never heard of that Monday. Anyway, let's uh, power it on and see what happens. I've plugged in keyboard, mouse, and the microscope. Ta da! Military. Ooh, military class. Beautiful. What has that got? You know, just like good quality caps or something. Is that pretty much it? Uh, here we go. Vision. Um, the password is uh, vision. Apparently, and that's it. It's got Windows installed, which is nice. And uh, present, but like, yeah, okay. Where's the icon? Do I have to install the software? Like, seriously? Um, this is a very expensive bit of kit, and yeah, I got the, I got the software with it, but. I shouldn't have to install it. I've, oh, I got a USB key, but yeah, come on. So yeah, here's the USB stick. I've got the manuals and ta-da, micro i64. So we'll install that, I'll get back to you. IDS, micro i setup, version 4.6, install driver, complete. Oh yeah, let's install everything, shall we? Yeah, whatever. Please choose a profile to adjust the camera parameters. Optimal colors, live video. Start micro eye cockpit in expert mode. Do not show dialogue again. Oh, no, live video. Come on. Nothing. We can't just install the software and expect this to pop up, apparently. Open camera. No micro eye camera present. We got it! <laughs> Stupid me. Plugged in the USB before I installed the software. You gotta install the software first and then plug in the USB so I can and install the driver first, so then doll. Anyway, yeah, it's working. No worries, look, we're in like Flynn. And the first thing I notice is that the view is cropped. I didn't expect to get like the circle, which you get uh, when you look through this thing. You get, you know, your traditional microscope uh, circle. So it's obviously cropped it. You can see that uh, like just outside the ground silk screen here and just uh, almost to, you know, th you know, three quarters of the way to the edge of that pot. I'll show you, try and get it through the lens. And there you go, that's what I'm seeing through the lens on, well, one lens on this thing. You don't get the stereoscopic effect, of course. If I had two cameras, I could actually, maybe, I know I've tried to do that before, actually. There's not enough room to get them in there, I don't think. Anyway, so, yeah, they have uh, cropped that fairly severely, actually. I mean, take a look at these two side by side. And this is one of the problems with the universal standard. If I don't touch... This bench, I mean, this is not the most rigid bench, by the way. It's, you know, it's a little bit how you're doing. But if I just lean on this and try and use the mouse, you can see our image wobbling, wobbling around there. So, yeah, it's not the best. You'd fix that with the uh, universal, um, sorry, the uh, desktop uh, stand instead of this universal stand. Or simply having a more stable bench. Mm, I won't give up my day job. I don't think I'll go into business building benches. And I'm going to say up front, this is not designed for live video work. It is designed to take snapshots and things like that. Yes, it'll do video, but like most USB uh, microscopes, it, you know, it doesn't have a great update rate. Okay, so you don't you you don't want to be buying this thing for live video. It does an okay job, but you wouldn't want to do any live soldering under it. And why the hell would you when you've got that beautiful optical viewport on the thing? That's the whole idea. So this software is designed for just you know annotating, documentation, annotation, and capture, all that sort of stuff. 
Actually, it's very quick on the default uh, screen size here of uh, 800 by 600 uh, live video window here. And you can see the number of uh, frames in the display update rate. And you can see, ta-da, 37 frames per second. Brilliant. But it won't get that when we go to full resolution. And please excuse me for not uh, actually screen capturing this. So it's just the camcorder directly on the screen here. And we've got different uh, uh, types of... Uh, uh, profiles here, we can go to monochrome and it takes a second to process, but look, it's automatically stretched it here and so it's gone to this option to uh, scale the display to the window size. If we go back to one to one, it's now gone, you can see down in the bottom corner here, it's now gone to 1600 by 1200 and bingo, which I believe is the maximum I think, uh, and bingo, 12 frames per second updating. So yeah, that's pretty horrible. If and the first thing I notice is that um, in the regular live image here, it, it is quite dim. It's nowhere near as bright as what you got through the uh, optical viewfinder of the thing. But that only seems to be in this uh, video mode. By the way, we can turn a histogram on here. There we go. Got a nice looking histogram. That's pretty groovy. That doesn't affect the uh, frame rate or anything like that. So we're getting 37 frames per second at the moment. But if I change this to say, if I go to optimal colors here, it seems to be much, much brighter. I can only presume that the smaller uh, 800 by 600 uh, mode isn't letting as much light in and it's just darker. I, I don't know what the deal is. And we can get some uh, host performance data here. So you can see frames per second from camera, 12.7. Our CPU is about 70% loading. Maximum frame per second possible uh, by CPU, 70 frames per second. There you go. Yeah, but not at the uh, resolution we're looking at. And at the uh, maximum resolution there, 1600 by 1200, looks to be captured the same frame capture area. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's limited. I much prefer looking through the viewfinder. It's just so sexy. So basically we can uh, start and stop the thing. We can capture a single uh, window, which I haven't actually tried to do yet. It just did, but it uh, looks like it didn't go back to live video there. And um, it doesn't look that like we can do much else. We can, single, we can do a continuous trigger. Uh, does that continually take snapshots? That'd be nice if it did, but like, where's all the measurement stuff? I don't know. I mean, we've got the histogram. But, like, save image, like, there's not much else. Hmm? Well, there's no shortage of stuff you can muck around with this thing. The camera settings, look at that, the pixel clock, jeez. You know, this is re <laughs> the, um, uh, the gain of the, you know, of the uh, sensor itself. And there's our, uh, there's all our different uh, sizes yet. Maximum 600 by 1200. Um, and what format we want. So it's all... It's all very impressive in terms of uh, capture capability, but it doesn't seem to do much else. Well, if you have a look at the manual for this thing, look, it's got a menu option up here which says uh, draw measure, and it's got all these tools and everything, which is what I expect. But we go to our software here, and I don't have a draw measure menu option and no tools, no nothing. Where the hell is it? Oh, I found it. Are you kidding me? You remember back at the start when it asked us if we wanted to start in the startup dialogue, if we wanted expert mode? You've got to turn expert mode on. Oh, you don't have to be an expert in quote marks to be able to just measure, use the measure stuff. But now we've got it. All down the side here, now we can do stuff and play around. That, unbelievable. And by the way, uh, you should actually go up here and load parameters and load the parameter file uh, that they actually give you. It sets up the settings for the Mantis Elite uh, cam. Anyway, uh, we can go into um, this thing, set up new area of interest, and we can just say we want an area of interest, and it just shows us that. Not sure why, but mm, okay, get rid of the visual clutter elsewhere. No, don't mind this mode here. We've got a sharpness measure, so we can actually set a window here, and it'll give us a sharpness setting. You might be able to see that. It's uh, it's green, which is showing 90, and if we change the, uh, move it up and take it out of focus, you can see that it's dropping 60, 54. I'm not sure if you can see that value down there in red. But yeah, it basically shows you when you're in focus, but 
yeah, why? I've got my eye that can tell me that. But anyway, has that ability to show you within that area if it's in focus or not. So I can do all the basic stuff with our tools over here. We can draw lines, yay. And we can draw, oh, sorry, freehand and we can draw lines so we can annotate the thing. And uh, well, you can either do it live or on a snapshot uh, image. And we can measure as well. We can put in some measurements. There we go, but that's not calibrated because that's not 422 millimeters or whatever it says. And sure, we can go in here and set it up, enter measurement unit in uh, per pixel, for example, but like, I'm buying this tool, right? Why do I have to set this thing up? It should know, right? You should be able to select from a menu. I'm using my times four lens. I'm using my time eight lens. It's in focus. Therefore, we know the focal distance. You know, at least get pretty close. Like, why do you have to do all this manually? It's just, nah, it, it's just these small things which don't make this worthwhile at all. But that's basically it. I mean, the measure, it just allows you to measure from one point to another. There's no things that automatically measure diameter and, you know, stuff like that. So some of, you know, even some of your cheap USB uh, microscopes, you know, come with software that allow you to do, you know, much fancier stuff than this. So this is pretty basic. I'm fairly disappointed in it. Now, I have no idea if you're going to be able to see this. I won't be able to see until I play it back. But I'm just basically checking for noise at the moment. And I'm checking for grain um, from the sensor because this has to do with the amount of available light shining. It's not too much, but I can see it. It's, you know, it's not too bad. So the available light on the, um, the internal light on the Mantis Elite Cam seems to be doing the business, but it could be a little bit better. There is, you know, a bit of grain on that image, which you get when uh, you don't have enough light. It's an issue of light. It's like the, um, the my Tagano microscope, for example, its internal light is hopeless. Fantastic microscope, but its internal light is absolutely hopeless, and you get video grain everywhere. It's just awful. So this one's actually, it's, it's not doing too bad. I, I give that a pass. Now, I switched in the uh, times 8 lens here, so we get double the magnification we did before, and uh, we'll be able to see the difference between the, what we're looking at now is a board with a photo imageable um, overlay on it, photo imageable silk screen, for what of a better term, and I'll show you that between a dot matrix one, this is the board we we're looking at before, and now you can see the individual dots in there. You can see that was done with a uh, dot uh, printer so you can really quite really significantly see the difference in there and if we get this on an angle we'll be able to go in there and see inside some of these uh, vias so there we go we can see inside some of the vias sorry for the wobble there but uh, that's the best I can do on this uh, bench it's not optimized for this sort of thing but uh, yeah it really is quite nice, but uh, you know, nothing you can't do with one of those uh, cheap ass USB microscopes at all. So yeah, yeah, nothing to write home about. It just does the job. But as I said at the start, um, this microscope, the Mantis Elite, is not designed for uh, like, you know, high magnification uh, inspection. As I said, you know, you can actually get a times 20 lens for this, but I've never used a times 20 on a Mantis Elite. I've only ever used up to uh, times 10. And, you know, that's what it's good for. It's not a high magnification microscope. It's a vision inspection uh, tool and for uh, live soldering. I mean, this microscope is absolutely unbeatable for live solder it and I can just flip that lens in there we go so that's the uh, times four and that's our times eight you can see the difference typically you would use the uh, times four lens for most general purpose uh, SMD soldering because you get a bigger working distance you get a larger frame on there you can see the iron coming in you know it's good enough for like 0402 and stuff like that but when you're in you, but when you're inspecting 0402 or uh, smaller stuff usually I won't live solder with uh, the times eight but then when I'm doing inspection I'll whack in the uh, times eight lens and then we can you know really start to see some stuff you know check it out there we go that's with our times eight lens we can really get in there and inspect those joints very nicely.
And here we go, I'm doing a video capture test in uh, 720p, so 1280 by 720. And uh, it's telling me that it's getting a frame update rate of 33 frames per second. So that's pretty darn good. So you can see them side by side through the viewfinder. And of course, I'm shooting this with my camcorder at uh, 50 uh, frames per second. So really, you know, you shouldn't see any difference between the uh, captured uh, video. So it's, you know... It's, it's doing pretty decent. I mean, nothing wrong with 33 frames per second. That's excellent. But for uh, for 720p, but of course you don't get the full um, HD out of it, of course. It just uh, slows down, drops down to 17 frames per second at uh, 1600 by uh, 1200. But the big problem, look at the frame size. Look, it is totally cropped it. It's just ridiculous you get a bit more you get a substantial bit more frame at 1600 by 1200 but still not as good as the optical viewfinder so it really is punishing you by cropping that image but hey the frame weight is adequate but this is not what it's for i mean you know you're not going to do live soldering under this while watching the monitor or anything like that it's just dumb you know you've got some of the world's best optics in this thing so you're just going to look through the hood i mean but anyway it can do it so there you have it. There's the Mantis Elite Cam. Thank you very much, Vision Engineering and uh, Hawker Richardson, for um, upgrading my uh, Elite, my regular Elite Cam, to my regular Mantis Elite, to the Mantis Elite Cam with the camera built in. And that's pretty much all it is. That's that's the bottom line. I mean, it is the industry's best uh, optical, uh, you know, vision inspection camera, coupled with a pretty ordinary. USB uh, camera attachment, and I'm, I'm pretty disappointed. You know, it didn't work nicely out of the box, but even then, the uh, USB camera software is pretty ordinary. Doesn't have any advanced functionality or anything like that. It doesn't have a high frame rate update camera. But as I said, that's not its purpose. If you're buying this thing for doing live work under, like, it's just not the right tool. You can go on, you know, eBay and buy a couple of hundred dollar USB uh, camera, and it's going to give a similar performance and update uh, rating and software in terms of, you know, using it as a basic, um, you know, live uh, USB microscope. That's not what it's for. It's designed for people who have a need and a use for the uh, regular Mantis optics, and they want to capture some stuff and, you know, document it and things like that, which is what I need it for, because I'm always using this. If I'm... Um, doing a teardown or something, I want to inspect something, if I'm doing some soldering, I'm going to be using this puppy instead of uh, any other bit of uh, inspection gear I've got. I mean, I've got a top of the line Tagano microscope, 60 frames per second, fantastic. But no, this thing kills it in terms of, you know, the optical, just looking through it, doing your soldering. It's just absolutely brilliant. You really have to look through these things to know how good they actually are. I can't really show it um, on camera, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm a bit disappointed. Just like this cable, for example, this USB yeah, cable out of the thing. It's like it's just like tacked on, you know, like like usually this is like really superbly built with the uh, cable built into the arm and everything. But they've just like tacked on a camera and I don't know why. It's not very professional. I could easily knock that and, you know, ruin that custom USB camera connection on it. I don't. Yeah, it just seems slapped together. And that's a real shame for a professional bit of kit like this but hey it does work it does the business so if you were looking at getting a mantis elite then hey you might if you're spending the money for a mantis elite i'm not sure of the price difference between the camera and the non-camera version but you probably should spring for the camera one because you're probably going to need it one day so it's worth having so yes, if I want to actually do live uh, either capture, video capture work or presentation, you know, if I was doing like live uh, work in front of an audience, you know, a classroom or something like that, I wouldn't be using this. The update rate just isn't good unless you use 800 by 600 mode. And well, yeah, any USB camera on the market can do that, although it doesn't have the ridiculously good optics that this thing has. But at the end of the day, when you're doing uh, USB uh, image capture, micro microscope capture work like this, it's pretty much all about the frame rate. And uh, that's pretty much frame rate and the resolution as well. So if I'm doing that live capture work, I'm going to be using my uh, Tagano microscope, which gets 60 frames per second update. It's a shame this thing doesn't have uh, you know, a real high frame rate uh, camera option, but 
it's good enough just for capturing uh, documentation and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, when you've got optics like this, you don't want to be looking at it on a 2D screen. Sacrilege, no. Oh, you want this. It's just beautiful. Oh, man. I've worked in front of these puppies all day long, and I can tell you, they're the duck's guts. So thanks Vision Engineer and Hawker Richardson. I'll link them in down below if you want to get one of these puppies. And they'll come around and they'll actually give you demos at your work and uh, stuff like that and show you how good these optics are. Absolutely brilliant. Or check them out at a trade show or something like that. Highly recommended. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, comments, all that sort of stuff down below. Catch you next time. And check it out. You can see the different optical paths inside this thing. And here's the pupil distance adjustment. There we go. It's actually just moving one of them like that.